Kevin Acosta here for Pool Soul Sports to give my post-match thoughts to New York City 1 into Miami nil. First off, the lineups for Phil Neville's side. The Herons maintain the same 4-2-3-1 setup. No changes. Equipo que gana, repite. Team that wins, repeats. With Inter Miami side that tried to dictate more of the possession in the first half. And New York City, despite not having possession, always kept control and had Inter Miami play in front of them. This is a match so far this season that you really noticed the absence of a true number 10, a Pozuelo type that went to Turkey. If yes, Gregory and Mota winning balls in the midfield, there were a few times when Pizarro or Corentin Jean Stefanelli were able to combine well outside the box. Inter Miami kept doing the same things that had helped them with Gregory that would drop back and free up Negri who would bomb up the left-hand side. In the Yankee Stadium where the pitch is smaller, turnovers leave Miami exposed. And it happened quite a few times for Negri especially. Went up a bit too far and then Gabi Pereira was able to have more space there to go 1-on-1 against McVay. Miami was struggling in times with the midfield especially with Keenan Parks having a good game. In the 22nd minute you see the first big save that Drake Callender had to make. And with those lack of through balls, Miami were just not able to create too many chances against the New York City defense that sit comfortably. New York were able to find the first goal through a free kick on the edge of the box. Austin McVay was not able to clear it and hit it into his own net. Towards the end of the first half, Bizarro with a good play on the right-hand side, crossed it inside the box to Joseph Martinez. And one of the best chances that Inter Miami had in that first half. In the second half, it was a similar situation for Inter Miami who had most of the possession, just really lacked the wing play. The one-on-one situation against the right back or left back of New York City. It's some sort of spark. Bring them back into the game. The calendar had to become vital for Inter Miami's side. Despite the lack of possession, New York City were able to create better chances against the Herons. Inter Miami was pushing up higher up in the second half, searching desperately to get the goal, and New York City on the counter was able to cause damage for Inter Miami. And unfortunately for Phil Neville, his captain Gregory, the engine in Inter Miami's midfield. After a tackle by Matias Pellegrini, ex-Miami player, suffered what appeared to be an ankle injury that we now know is a Liz Frank injury. Jean Mota stayed on the right for Coco Jean. Bryce Duke had come on. Quarantine Jean, who had a very quiet game, collided right next to Mota. Ambassador had come on for Gregory. Ambassador in the past few games has looked likely and created some opportunities. As well as a Robert Taylor who had come on to try to give Miami some sort of attack and presence for Nicolas Stefanelli. And yet Miami only finished with three shots on goal. As opposed to the last game where they beat Philadelphia with the two goals, they were more ruthless in front of the goal. Keep suffering with the lack of chances created. Calendar had to stand on his head and had seven saves in this game. It was kept Miami just one goal from drawing. This is a result that comes tough to into Miami who had had momentum leading up to this match. For winning the first two games in the season, something the club has not done. The worst thing for the Herons having their captain out, possibly for the season. It'll be interesting to see what Chris Henderson and Phil Neville will do to fill that vacancy for the end of the season. And if they enact the season-ending replacement player. Saying all this, and Miami will travel to Toronto to see if they can bounce back from this disappointing match.